I really like seasoning with oil in beeswax, but there's also other methods. What's the best way? Hi, I'm Jed and this is Cook Culture. So in the world of seasoning carbon steel and cast iron, there are different ways to get the end result done. And I've seen lots of different ways and the end result is good and people are using them and that's fantastic. So if you're seasoning your pans and you're getting it done and it's working for you, then you're doing it the right way. However, I, I talk to people all the time like, you know, is there a better way? Should I actually do this instead? And I'm not 100% sure, but you know, I think there could be uh, cleaner ways or um, you know, less smoky ways. Or you know, I, I know people that like to season until it, their pans are very black and carbonated. I, I personally really try to stay away from carbon, but they have good results. They're getting nonstick, so it's, it's working for them. And that's, that's great. So I do it my way and other people do it their way, as long as you're getting good end results where you're, you're able to use the pan, you're, you're loving the results, things are not sticking, and you're just happy using your cookware, that's great. However, two of the, the biggest ways to season your pan is just straight oil or using what is known as the potato method. So potato skin, salt, and oil. And that is a more involved process it's a messier process. It's, it takes a longer to, to do that process. Um, however, it is a great process and it works. Oh, I've seen it work really well. I've actually never done it myself. I've had chefs that have done it that way. They're committed to it doing that. And so I've seen the good results that they are. However, what I've never done that I'm really interested in is if we take seasoning wax, that is basically an oil with, with wax, that is kind of the newer way to apply oil uh, and become very, very popular, um, and compare that to the tried and tested old method of using potato skin, salt, and, and oil, and see how that goes. So the, this method with the potato skins is really cooking on the surface and using salt to really kind of scour down the, the pan, um, where the beeswax and oil is really just straight seasoning. Um, so I'm gonna do two coats of the oil and wax and just really any recommendation you're gonna find online is really gonna tell you just to do the one cooking process with the potato skin. So one here, I'm gonna do two with the, with the wax. I would usually recommend to do three, um, but we're gonna do two. And then I'm gonna cook some diced onions and we're gonna see, you know, is there a big difference between these? So here we go. Okay, so to keep things equal, we've got two Dubai 10 inch skillets. So brand new two skillets. They're going to go to the sink, hot water. I'm going to take the beeswax protective coating on from off them. And then we're going to get them onto the hob. Okay. So we've got the pens washed fairly well. You know, we don't have to take all the wax off. Some of the wax being left on uh, is beneficial for the seasoning, uh, except they, I guess, logically using the salt process tries to get more of the wax off. But I've had lots of people ask, well, you're taking the protective wax off and then you're just putting wax back on. Yeah. Wax really helps with holding the seasoning on. So, you know, taking all of the wax off with the salt method, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think this process comes back from the days before beeswax coating. Back when I was a kid in kitchen wares, pans didn't come with beeswax. They came with machine oil. So you got a carbon steel pan from France that was a rarity when I was a kid. All we sold was nonstick. You just couldn't find carbon steel really anywhere. You had to go to France to buy it. But when we did get it, it would come in a plastic bag, super plain basic with machine oil on it. So I can understand that you would want to try to get as much of that machine oil off and you're going to clean it really well. Then you're going to use salt to try to get as much of that off. That really makes a lot of sense to me, but the beeswax, it, it really doesn't matter. When you take a mineral bee or something that comes with a beeswax coating home and start cleaning it, don't be obsessive about getting all the beeswax off. It's totally fine. So I've got my beeswax and I've got the potato skins, and I've got the oil and the salt. So we'll throw the uh, oil in. 
to this one here. So it calls for a lot of oil. So it comes, calls for one third of a cup of oil. So that's a lot of oil. It calls for two thirds of a cup of salt, which is a lot of salt. So we'll get one, two, and then we've got two potatoes peeled. So we get those in. So that's the beginning of the potato peel process. We're going to get the beeswax. I'm going to take a little bit on my trusty rag and I'm going to get it the coating all around on that pan. So all around on the inside, all around the outside. Interestingly, when I've read the instructions for this pan, uh, doing it with the, the potato skin, uh, Cooks Illustrated has a, a really in-depth process. They don't talk about seizing the outside of the pan, which, you know, I think it's important on any cooktop that you get the oil on the backside. You don't want this to rust or oxidize. So that's all around. Um, that guy is now just going to cook. And I'm going to grab something to do some work with this guy here. Start to get this all around. And these guys have been on a five for a bit. I'm going to get them up to a six now. Just going to work that pan around for a while. So part of what I was also saying about the, the um, Cook's Illustrated process is that they also say to use some tongs and a paper towel. That's in the entire process. That's the one thing that I would say don't. I have had really bad experience with any sort of paper towel in a hot pan. It just is a bad mix where a cotton rag works so, so, so well. And what the Cook's Illustrated process was talking about is that they recommend, as I do, that for post seasoning, once you've cooked, to clean the pan simply and then use paper towel with tongs to wipe your oil around, which you know, if you're a nice rag, you don't have to worry about how hot your pan is. You just use your rag and it works really well. So I find that is a, a bonus. So I'm just going to let this start to cook away and do its thing. Um, you know, my other pan here is just cooking away nice and slowly. So it's just going to start to brown up. We don't want anything to happen overly quick. Things don't have to get blackened. That's not the point is to get it really black. We want a really nice golden patina is what we're looking for. Um, you know, I don't know what the end result here is going to be with the potato skin method of the, the coloring. I would imagine it's gonna be a lot darker being that we're cooking food with a lot of starch and quite a lot of, of fiber in it. So, but we'll, we'll see. We'll just let her cook away and see where we get. So we've been through the seasoning process. Um, this is the result here of doing the uh, plain oil and wax method. Um, what I expect, it's a little bit uh, light because I've only done two coats. Usually I would do three coats. So I would get a, even more of a patina throughout more of the pan with, with another coat there. Um, but it's gonna be adequate. And I think in this test, I think this is a, a right balance. Um, this is what I'm really surprised by. So this was, you know, cooking for a good amount of time, following the exact uh, process from Cooks Illustrated. Uh, in the picture in Cooks Illustrated that you'll see online, if uh, from the link that I, I put here uh, down below, um, it, their pan turned a lot more brown than, than mine. This one looks still quite new. Um, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a seasoning built up on it. You know, I'm using a grapeseed oil, so it has you know almost no fiber in it, uh, and you know there was a lot of moisture going on there, so it really didn't start to 
to uh, reduce the, the moisture content and start to kind of brown. That's where I find the browning starts to come once the moisture is, is gone from the pan uh, and things start to kind of brown in color. So I, I'm optimistic that it's gonna work quite well. So I'm gonna get these both onto the heat now and we're gonna cook onions in both and see uh, how things go. Here we go. Okay, so I've left these two guys on here to preheat really, really well. And I'm starting to get some color into this guy here that we did the uh, potato peel. So it's, it's just starting to kind of uh, blue and brown a little bit that is coming from the heat. So obviously there was some oil on that residue uh, and that is starting to brown. So that's starting to come to a little bit of a, of a color that I would expect. Uh, and we've got uh, good color within our plain oil process. So we're gonna get a little bit of, uh, of grapeseed on here, not too much, just a little bit, just to coat all over. So just gonna get that around. These guys have been on the preheat here for, I've left them, I've been doing other things, so probably close to 10 minutes that they've been preheating. So we've got half an onion per. So they're really nice and hot and, and all the way up through. So tons of preheat here, like even to the handle, the handle is nice and warm. What we're gonna do is just let those cook away and uh, see how we get. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our cooking process here. And um, you know, they, they both are cooking exactly the same way. Um, no big difference. I, I, I guess what we'll see when I take this off here, it looks like there's a little bit less buildup on um, our wax pan and a bit more buildup on our uh, potato peel pan. The cooking process is, is great. Um, the sticking and cleaning issue we will get at in, uh, in the sink right now. Okay, so at the sink, this one here is uh, the potato peel, and this one here is the wax. So a little bit different in color, uh, and we'll see how they end up cleaning up. So we're gonna take some just regular running kind of coolish water, nothing too cold. Hot pans. We're gonna take our chainmail scrubby. Very, very lightly. New seasoning on these pans. They don't need a heavy scrub. So I'm just wiping around, just kind of with the weight of the scrubby. And that's about it. You know, I could even be using a cloth here. They, the the, 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 the um, onion is coming off really, really easily. So there's no problem there. Okay, wipe them around. Grab myself a cloth. Give them a wipe down. And we'll get these back onto the stovetop. Okay, so we've got these guys back onto the, uh, onto the stovetop. And as per the Cook's Illustrated instructions, I'm going to use a little bit of, of grapeseed oil uh, on this pan uh, with a paper towel. I don't love doing it, but I'm gonna use the paper towel because that's what they say to do. Um, and I'm gonna be using the seasoning wax with cotton cloth on this guy. So just a visual inspection here. So this guy, he's changed some color in cooking, but he's, he's really, really dry. I'm gonna season the bottom of this because I just have to. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's not looking awesome for what I expect visually. Um, we're, we're going in the right direction here. We, we really need to build a lot more patina around the edge, but our base cooking surface is where we want it to be. You know, really the end results here, these are the two end results of the onions. The onions exactly the same. So they, they turned out the same. So the cooking process was the same. Uh, and 
the cleanup was as easy with them. So visually, this guy isn't looking awesome yet, but you know, doing really the same job. Um, they've, they've produced the same way so far. So let's just get these guys uh, post season. Okay, so we're all done post seasoning. So we've got the potato peel pan and we've got the beeswax pan. So an interesting finish, um, you know, a little bit different in, in color variation, but uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, they're, they're similar-ish. Uh, you know, visually, I, I like the look of the beeswax one. Uh, I, and I just see that the one that we did with potato peels just needs to continue on. Uh, it's not in a bad shape whatsoever. It's just, it seems that it, it just didn't get as far down the road. Um, they both cooked the same way. They cleaned up really well. Um, and so I just think from, from the build standpoint is that I would continue to build. And maybe this is a fine point to just start cooking, you know, get yourself some you know, fattier foods on here and just start building your cooking seasoning, uh, which is really the, the best way to be seasoning is actually just to start cooking with it. Um, you do want to have some sort of a, of, of a layer on there just so you don't get incredible sticking onto a, a bare metal. So having some seasoning helps. Uh, and the potato skins seem to have done somewhat of that. But, you know, this is not my ideal way of doing things. I don't love this kind of beginning result. And also I found the method of doing this, that was super messy. <laughs> it's like I had the two pans beside each other and it was splattering and spitting all over my wax pan and that I had to keep cleaning out because this guy was just being super, super uh, messy and just misbehaving all over the place. So I did not like that because I just, you know, there's a lot of mess to clean up unnecessarily. So I don't see this being any benefit right now, you know, really comparatively to where the two stand, I think this is further down the road. Uh, so I would still prefer doing the beeswax method. I think this worked really, really well um, from, from all around. Uh, I got beeswax on the back side faster than on this one too. I now have done the back. Um, so I am still a big, big fan of the way in which I have continued to do it. And that is just using beeswax that I did in, in this video. And previously in other videos, I do a lot more methods and I give it a good amount of resting in between each coating. Uh, I've also done the oven method, which I find gives more of an overall patina. Uh, you get to the end result faster. Um, so, you know, the, the proof will be in the pudding though. You know, I will continue cooking with these two pans and see kind of how they, they uh, work and develop that seasoning over time. I think they're beginning to lock in quite hard. I think that they, the pre-seasoning for both of them has been good. I don't think that there's going to be any, you know, problems with peeling or issues later on. I didn't cook these guys at too high a heat. That is really problematic when you're developing seasoning. You don't want to be impatient. You want to take a lot of time. I did a long preheat before I applied the oil. When the oil on, I let it cook on. I've let them cool for a long time. So taking your time for each layer of pre-cooking and post and cooling is really important. You know, just getting in it, cranking it up, getting it smoking, you know, seasoning, 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 you know, letting it, you know, start cooking right away. What you'll end up doing, having a very, very fragile layer. And either when you go to clean it or when you cook it sometime, things will just start peeling off and you'll just have problems or you'll definitely develop some flaking later on. Um, so patience up front really, really matters whatever method you choose. So I hope that has been helpful, the difference between those two main methods out there. And I'm still a, a huge fan of using uh, beeswax and oil. So I hope you like this video. And if you do, please subscribe. And any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thanks so much.